Tire moved off the ground. There you go. Pick up, pick up off the ground there. The different points on the racetrack depend on how you're in a throttle, how you brake, how you come off, or depend on how you carry that tire up off the corner. Of course, he's moved up another position. He's up to 28 now. So, uh, boy, a long way to go from the back of the pack. But if anybody can do it, the road racer, of course, he straight here can. And Terry Labonte has taken second position away from Dale Jarrett. That's the lead, isn't it? No. Oh, second position. Oh, Earnhardt stays out there. That's yeah, right. He's, he's still uh, far he away. While I was moving, <laughs> while I was walking over here, Earnhardt stayed out. Okay. Yes, he did. Not well, surprising, though, huh? No, not really. <laughs> you did stop for a cheeseburger, didn't you? I wish I could have, but I did. <laughs> Pretty good battle for second spot is, or third spot, actually, Jared, Rudd, Rusty, and Ernie Irvin. On top of Rusty's Miller. Looking back at Ernie Irvin's Ford. This is the car they call Killer, or at least uh, Rusty does. Boy, Ernie's looking to every direction there to try to find a way around Rusty Wallace. Ernie started in seventh place. He now is running in the sixth position. Really stalking Rusty Wallace as they go through turn nine here. Rusty had to get off the gas a little bit up in that turn nine. Not able to come off that corner wide open then. Seeing that number of cars uh, trip a little bit as they come off of there. But Terry Labonte has driven away from Dale Jarrett after he got around him, so he might be closing in on Dale Earnhardt. We can see that Labonte just isn't that far behind Earnhardt. And goes down in the corner and gets ever closer, and Rudd takes a look on the inside of Jarrett. I will see Mark Martin and Joe Nemechek, Jeff Gordon slipping back. Gordon is currently in the ninth spot. Here's Mark Martin going for four wins in a row. He was going for four pole positions in a row here, but unfortunately did not get that accomplished. But he is still uh, going for the fourth win in a row here at Watkins Glen. Joe Nemechek right behind him. Then Jeff Gordon and Ken Schrader, who hangs in there in 10th position. 15 laps completed. This is a 90-lap race here at Watkins Glen. Earnhardt is your leader at the moment, followed by Labonte, Jarrett, Rudd, and Wallace. at Watkins Glen and NASCAR Online at www.nascar.com will bring you real-time electronic timing and scoring that Winston Cup officials use to monitor the races. You'll also be able to watch the progress of any car on the track and even print out a scoreboard to follow along with each race. NASCAR Online, www.nascar.com. Bobby Hamilton makes a pit stop and rolls back out. That's some damage to that left front fender. So he's knocked the fender in on the tire. That's why the unscheduled pit stop to pull that fender. And the crew telling him, be careful on pit road. You had to stop once. Don't get a ticket for speeding. Here comes Earnhardt. He's going to be lucky to stay in the same lap. Go have to go hard because that's Earnhardt behind you, but <laughs> there he is. Dale Emmy, you're exactly correct. That black car is Earnhardt, the leader. We also had a spin while we were in break. It involved John Andretti, and it was a spin and obvious contact with uh, the wall because he came away from it with some damage. Well, maybe it was contact with another car. Yes, it was. <laughs> so we talk about the left front damage on the 43 car. That's what it is. And look at Andretti go up and back in the fence. Pretty good damage to the rear of the Kmart Ford. But no caution, Andretti got the car fired and headed in the right direction, so the green remains out as Dale Earnhardt maintains his advantage over Terry Labonte. Here comes Dale Jarrett running third, then Ricky Rudd, and there's some fluid reportedly coming. Oh, oh there's trouble at... Yeah, there is smoke coming out of Ricky Rudd's car. There's also trouble out in the interloop. That's a right rear brake that Ricky Rudd's having trouble with. You can see the fluid building that's, up on Rusty's lens. That's brake fluid. 
right, Bill Elliott? Looks like brake fluid uh, coming out around the hub on the right rear tire there. Uh, hopefully, I'll notice that in a minute, because if you drive down one of these corners and lose the brakes, it's going to have a heck of a ride. Yeah. But Bill, there was a lot of smoke the last time he came into the interlude here, so that might be when, when something gave way uh, that uh, it shot that fluid out there, and now it, it continues to go. Jimmy Spencer, when I said there was trouble in the interlude, Jimmy Spencer spun over here, but he just made a 360 and kept getting how do you differentiate between uh, brake fluid and water or something else, other liquid? Well, it, it, looking at that, it might be something like an axle seal or something like that, something getting on the right rear brake, but it's something that's isolated to that area, but he is losing a lot of fluid. It's like he's going to have a problem here a little bit later on in the race. And more from Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys, let's ask Danny Marshman, who calls the race for Ricky Rudd. Danny, what's leaking out there? We're seeing some smoke. Just a little bit of rear grease out of the rear, and he says he can smell it, but when he comes by, the back of the car is not getting dirty, so hopefully it's not too bad right now. Danny, we'll let you go. They're going to black flag him next time by. They're going to make him come in and have you guys take a look at it. So apparently, the rear end grease, a little bit of overflow. He said he may have it too full, but whatever, the tide car will have to make a stop on pit road. So Rudd has been shown the black flag, and Mark Martin trying to make a move on Ernie Urban for sixth position and gets it. So Mark Martin, man, this car has been strong for the last three years, and the fourth year is no different, is it? No, it certainly isn't. That car knows its way around this racetrack, and certainly Mark Martin knows how to put, his, put that car in here. Dorsey Schrader making another move, passing Kenny Wallace in the car number 81. He's been following him for about five laps. Now moves around him. and Robert Presley also moving up. I know during the break we talked about Jimmy Spencer had gained a lot of positions, Bob, had moved up through there, but uh, then he's fun in the interloop but don't know how much, how many positions that might have cost him. There is Spencer just ahead of Dorsey. We might mention that Dorsey won the Trans Am race here yesterday on this racetrack, and he is currently the leader in the Trans Am series. I'm sure that's one of the reasons Bill Elliott chose him again. Um, well, I chose him before yesterday. <laughs> well, I know, but you know, you know his road racing experience is what I mean. <laughs> That's right, man. He's done an excellent job, I'll tell you. He's a good, real good guy, too. Yeah, he is. He's worked with us a lot on our broadcast from various uh, locations. And uh, good broadcaster, good driver. Bill Weber has a report from Pit Road. Well, Bobby Hamilton's back in. He came in a lap ago to fix the left side sheet metal, put new tires on the car and fuel in it. He went around, called in, said his motor just quit. So they've got the hood up on the SPG Pontiac. They're talking it over. Bobby sits in the car, but the car not running, and Bobby Hamilton sits on pit road, very disappointed. Showing new colors on that car uh, this week. And, uh... Look at the garage, my bro. He just quit. He's thinking maybe it broke a timing chain or a camshaft, I think is what they're talking about. Yeah, that's the petty blue of old. Yep. Back in the early 70s, late 60s, there's a battle for what? Four spots? Rusty Wallace running fourth, Mark Martin fifth. You remember, Rusty has a lot of buildup on his windshield because he was following Ricky Rudd, so he's asked for another man over the wall on his pit stop that he can come by and uh, clean the windshield. Here, meanwhile, is Rudd heating the black flag and coming toward his pit. Jerry? Well, Bob, 35 miles an hour, that's the speed. It must be like an eternity for Ricky Rudd. That's 4,000 RPM in first gear, I'm told, as he brings the tide forward down pit road. They have the jack stands, Danny Marshman and company go to work on the outside, the left side of the car. It will change left side tires. They will take the left rear tire off, take a look underneath the car. Thus far, NASCAR looking beneath the rear of the car. One official on his knees, now another one on his knees looking beneath the rear of the car. Marshman has said they thought it was an overflow problem, possibly overfilling the rear end tank. This is a brand new race car. They remember they had a brake problem on Friday? They changed all four tires, and he is down and away. And now NASCAR will talk to Danny Marshman. That is Alan Bryson, the NASCAR official, saying, bring him back in, bring him back in. We didn't get a look. He does have something leaking out, according to NASCAR, so they're going to discuss it. We'll find out what they say and get back to you, Bob. All right. So Ricky Rudd having problems here in the early going of the Bud at the Glen.